Welcome to the recorded version of the Grantmakers and Aging Web Seminar, Connecting Generations Through Documentary and Intergenerational Tech Training, featuring Lisa Marsh Ryerson, President of the AARP Foundation, Brenda Rusnak, Producer and Entrepreneur, and John Feather, CEO of Grantmakers and Aging, from August 12, 2014. This event was made possible by a partnership between Grantmakers and Aging, the John A. Hartford Foundation, the AARP Foundation, the CEA Foundation, and Cyber Seniors. Technical and production support is provided by the American Society in Aging. Thanks, Steve. It's always great to, to be with you. And I want to thank all of you for joining us in this part of our continuing series of monthly webinars on critical issues on aging. As Steve told you, today's session is entitled Connecting Generations Through Documentary and Intergenerational Tech Training. And I am John Feather. I'm the CEO of Grantmakers in Aging. Before we start, I want to thank those whose support has made it possible for us to provide today's webinar free of charge to our audience. The John A. Hartford Foundation of New York provides continuing support for the series. And today we're, we're joined by the AARP Foundation, the CEA Foundation, and Cyber Seniors. We also want to thank the expert team at the American Society on Aging for providing technical and production support for the series. Today we have a fascinating presentation that touches on many issues of interest to our audience, creating truly intergenerational programs, bridging the technology divide, engaging volunteers in new ways, and finding out ways that foundations can play an important role in developing these efforts. What started as a high school community service project and inspired a critically acclaimed documentary film is now the force behind Cyber Seniors, Connecting Generations campaign, working in collaboration with AARP Foundation's Mentor Up program. Our speakers are joining us today to discuss the importance of intergenerational collaboration in bridging the digital divide and to present this innovative model for disseminating information and supporting change through youth-driven community projects. We also want to invite you to view the film trailer and learn more at, at www.cyberseniorsdocumentary.com. That's all one word cyberseniorsdocumentary.com. We'll be referring back to this later in the program. We're pleased to have two experts today who have been deeply engaged in this process and will help us understand the opportunities and challenges. Joining me today are Lisa Marsh Ryerson, the president of the AARP Foundation, and Brenda Rusnak, a producer with Cyber Seniors. And welcome to you both. Hi, John. Thank you. Thanks. Hi. Brenda and Lisa, could you tell us a little bit about your backgrounds? And then we'd also like to hear uh, some opening comments about the current state of technology use among seniors, particularly in, in the issue of technology adoption rates among low-income and undereducated seniors. Uh, Brenda, let's start with you. Okay. Well, thanks. Hi, everyone, and thanks, John. Uh, for that uh, wonderful introduction. As John mentioned, um, I am the producer of Cyber Seniors, a documentary film, and the champion of Cyber Seniors Connecting Generations campaign. Um, I'm new to the film, biz film production business. I'll share that story with you a little later on, um, but I'm certainly not new to the field of aging. Um, I'm a physiotherapist by profession, and I spent over 30 years working in elder care providing rehab services to older adults. Um, and it's interesting because although my focus was on physical therapy and rehab, um, it, during my career it became more and more evident to me that this group of growing, this growing group of um, elderly individuals were really trailing further and further behind in technology. And when I think back, when I first started my career, there was actually no internet. In fact, the fax machine had not even been invented yet. <laughs> and so, you know, thankfully, um, I was forced to adapt new technology because I was still in the workforce and I, I needed to adapt it. But what I witnessed was that there was this growing population of older adults that were f f falling further and further behind the rest of the world uh, because they didn't need to adapt technology and you know there was nobody that was um, I guess encouraging them to do so or um, insisting that they do so so what I saw is that you know as I was working to keep them physically fit and um, physically um, able to move around uh, in the world 
they were losing out um, in another aspect of their life, and that was the adoption of, of technology. Um, and certainly uh, that the digital divide exists. Um, however, it is improving, which, which is encouraging to see. Um, recent Pew research supports the fact that um, although the digital divide still exists, um, now just six in ten seniors are actually going online and just under half are broadband broadband adopters, which is, is great news, but obviously we have a lot of work still to do. Um, you know, the most interesting thing about the most recent uh, Pew Research that, that I find interesting is that the challenges that are identified in preventing older adults from getting online. And, you know, some of them are, are obvious, like, you know, the difficulties in learning new technologies and, and you know, it, it's difficult for anybody to learn something new. And the physical changes that, that older adults face in you know, eyesight and hand dexterity. But the one that fascinates me the most, and I think that um, our work with um, the AARP Foundation really um, addresses is the skeptical attitudes about the benefits of technology and the relevance. Um, there's a real need for older adults to understand the relevance of getting online. And certainly that's what our experience was in developing the Cyber Seniors Program and in uh, filming the documentary film. Um, so um, I hope to, during this presentation today, I hope to demonstrate to you that the work that we've been doing with AARP Foundation really does address these barriers and, and it's these barriers that are the key to success, I think. Over to you, Lisa. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Brenda. John, I add my uh, thank you to you. Like Brenda, I'm just delighted to be here, and a hello to all of my colleagues who are out there uh, across the nation on the phone lines. Happy to be talking with you today. I am new to AARP Foundation. This is my first year, but I am not new to working with young people, which is what excites me so much about our collaboration with Cyber Seniors and our topic today and the really terrific Mentor Up program that had been developed here at ARP Foundation before I came. For almost two decades, I served as a college president. And in that capacity, you all can imagine, I saw firsthand each and every day the desire that young people have to get involved in purposeful, meaningful work in the many communities that they join, both well in college and in high school and also post-graduation. And this might be short-term opportunities or longer-term opportunities, but they really care deeply about uh, giving back. So what excites me about working with cyber seniors through our Mentor Up program is that we're, and you can see on the screen, that we're able to say to young people, what you know is what they need. In other words, they can put their technological skills and other skills that they have to really good use in helping older people. Here at the foundation, and Brenda, I wanted to bounce off what you were talking about for Pew's uh, Research Center study, which I would share with everyone is, is very fresh. This research was completed last fall, uh, right before we launched uh, 2014. And the research does show that older adults are adopting at lower, slower rates, but in fact they are adopting technology. From our work here at the foundation, at ARP Foundation, we work with low income older Americans, adults who are 50 plus and low income. And when you look at the research through the lens of those who have lower incomes, it won't surprise any of you that we find that they adopt at lower rates. Of course, that's related to things like not having access to broadband or any internet, not having resources or access to the technological tools. However, what I also found interesting about the study, and Brenda, I'd be curious about your thoughts, I think it bodes well for our instincts and our partnership, is that older Americans say in that study that they are interested in getting online and they know that in order to do so effectively, they need great assistance. And this is where Mentor Up and Cyber Seniors uh, joins in. Our programs are built to allow young people to share what they know and really train older people to bridge this digital divide. And it's very important that we bridge the divide. When, when older adults uh, don't have access to other people and lose social connection, they become ill. Isolation is bad for their health. So it's just good for young people, old people, individuals, and communities for us to really get at this uh, digital divide issue. 
Let's talk more specifically about the, the programs then. Uh, if we go to the next slide. Uh, Brenda, tell us a little bit about uh, Cyber Seniors and the Connecting Generations campaign and what you hope to accomplish. Okay. Well, if I can, if I may, I'll provide you with a little bit of background and how it all got started. Um, uh, I have five children, and when my youngest two daughters were in high school, they needed to do a community service project. And they came up with the idea of starting a cyber seniors program after my mom, their grandmother, commented on a picture um, that one of them had posted on Facebook. And, you know, I, I think initially they weren't quite sure how to feel about their grandparents looking at their pictures on Facebook. But the more they chatted about it amongst themselves, the more they realized that, you know, their relationship with their grandparents and, and, my, and their grandparents' lives had really changed as a result of getting online. Um, you know, as a mom, you ha I had children that um, spent a lot of time with my parents when they were young and loved being with them. And as they became teenagers, teenagers become, you know, very, very busy in their own lives. And it really just, it, it broke my heart to see them um, becoming more distant to my parents. And, and once my parents got online, there was this ability and this relatability um, once again, and they had something in common that they could talk to. So anyways, my daughters thought that this would be a great opportunity to, um, for a community, uh, community um, uh, service project. And they approached a local retirement home and did a presentation to the senior citizens at the home and, uh, you know, encouraged them all to sign up for lessons. And then they went back to their school and gathered a number of their uh, schoolmates and convinced them all to um, go to this retirement home and start teaching seniors how to use the Internet. Um, at the time, my oldest daughter, who is a filmmaker, um, went along with them to film some of the um, – uh, lessons uh, in order to promote the program for their school project. And I had just retired. I had sold a business that I had had, a healthcare business that I had had for 30 years. And she came home one day and she said to me, Mom, we have to make this documentary film. She said, you know, I'm, I'm filming this and I'm seeing all kinds of really amazing things happen as these older adults start to realize the uh, World Wide Web and the, the entire world out there that it brings into them, but also the friendships that we're developing between these younger individuals and these older individuals. And also the fact that these younger individuals were really, were really, really taking pride in their work and really enjoying what they were doing. Um, and I think, you know, initially... Um, the thought of, of a younger person, the thought for a younger person of helping an older adult is, is probably not the most, it's not on the top of their priority list. Um, but what she started, my, what my daughter started to observe in filming these, these lessons were, was that there really was uh, an opportunity here to narrow the generation gap and, and for young people to teach older people and for older people to teach younger people. Um, and so that's how the, um, the uh, program got started. We filmed for 10 months. We edited the film for, well, I didn't, my daughter did, for a full year. And in May of this year, it premiered in Los Angeles and New York. And um, since then, it has been on a um, North American-wide tour, uh, largely supported um, through organizations such as MentorUp and AARP, who see the value in bringing together intergenerational audiences um, to discuss the issue of the digital divide and to inspire and encourage people to get involved. And what's kind of interesting is that, you know, we're not, my daughters certainly were not the first people to start um, a cyber seniors type of program. Um, if you have Google alerts, um, as I do for, you know, youth teaching seniors, um, there's a lot of, of kids out there that are doing great work around the world. Um, but what we have found is that uh, by using the film, we're able to, in fact, bring together individuals and organizations within each community and make them all aware of the good work that they're doing and um, allow them to share in their resources and work together um, to, to further enhance and further narrow the digital divide. So that's really how the campaign started and, and what it's all about. Thanks so much. Uh, as we move to the next slide, uh, Lisa, ARP, of course, is a well-known uh, 
organization, the largest membership organization in the world, but many of us in the audience may not think of AARP and the AARP Foundation in connection with high school students. Could you tell us why MentorUp was created and why, what's important for our uh, GIH community to know about this reverse mentoring process and intergenerational collaboration? No, absolutely, John, and again, thanks for the opportunity. You know, at AARP Foundation, as we're working, uh, you know, hard and in a, in a fast manner to be sure that we're really winning back opportunity for Americans who are older and are struggling, we are committed to bringing together all resources that can help us uh, meet our goals. And as Brenda, you said earlier, you know, although it may not be top of the list for young people to say, I'll, I'll sign on for an activity to help older people, what we have found here and what I found in my long career working with young people is that it is at the top of their list to engage in work helping others and helping their communities. So for us, uh, John, it was, you know, knowing, recognizing that young people are a valuable resource, first and foremost, that they want to give back in meaningful ways. That on some level, I guess I would say that they love their grandparents, and that's whether or not they have grandparents. That might be neighbors or other older adults, teachers. Uh, they have experience with older people adding value to their lives. So, so it is, in, in many ways, a, a natural evolution to then want to give back and help the older generation. Another reason why it's important for us at AARP Foundation is that we've found that it isn't good for communities to have false divides or divisions between the generations. So as much as these experiences are good for the individuals involved, uh, reverse mentoring strengthens communities and really um, gets at any stereotypes that exist about divides between these generations. So it's very positive for communities as well. And then finally, I would add, though there are many other reasons, top of our list for developing Mentor Up is that we know and studies prove that for, for older people, uh, in particular those who have um, illness, health illnesses or cognitive dementia, that their health is really improved when they work with young people. And so the opportunity for us to build this network that taps into the energy of young people across the nation and also improves uh, the lives of struggling older adults was something that we really very much wanted to tap into. Obviously, Cyber Seniors is a great, great fit for us because it, it allows us to – the story is wonderful. I encourage all of you to watch the trailer, um, take the opportunity to see the film. But it really shows the power of generations coming together. Older people have a need. The younger volunteers and cyber senior have skills that they can share. And over the course of their work with older, the older adults, they realize that although there are differences as humans, we have a lot in common too. So it's really heartwarming and compelling as well. And then, you know, I would remind all of you that, or tell you for the first time, that here at AARP and at the foundation, we know that our work benefits from engaging volunteers of all ages. And so, we have a tradition of working with a full range of other not-for-profits and community volunteers to be sure that we're harnessing uh, the passion and the time that they want to give uh, to help older Americans. It's a, it's a wonderful and inspiring story. Uh, as we go to the, the next uh, slide, uh, Brenda, we've heard of the, the term uh, reverse mentoring, and it'd be great for you to help us uh, better understand that concept. But you, you've laid out the need for digital literacy, the value of reverse mentoring, and cyber seniors as a valuable program. How are you sharing the message and the resources available with young people and older adults? Well, um, you know, it, it's when when I mean, I've watched the film probably a hundred times plus now, and it's it's really quite kind of fascinating to me because each time I watch it, uh, different messages emerge, and I think that you know it it is it's a tool um, that is highly effective in bringing forth some really really some really really important themes and you know the obvious ones are things like lifelong learning that's that you know that's a given you're never too old to learn something new um, but there's other messages as well like ageism and and the film really really clearly portrays um, that ageism is um, something that uh, needs to be 
um, addressed in our society, and and it doesn't need to exist because I think we see very, very beautifully throughout the film that this whole concept of ageism just doesn't exist within within the context of the film. Um, and obviously, it, it it you know teaches young people how important community service is. But you know, I think at the heart of the film, the most important message that really comes clear is this need for human connection and this real need to um, bridge the generation gap and to keep people connected, and technology can do that. Um, and obviously, reverse mentoring is the key to that. So what we've been witnessing as people watch the film is that for older adults, it really addresses this skepticism about what can what can can, can t- technology to do for me. We see a lot of individuals, older adults, watching the film, going into the film thinking, you know, I'm too busy for the Internet, my life is full, I've got everything I need, or I'm too old to learn, and they come out saying, ah, now I get it. Now I see that if I learn new technology, it will bring me closer to the people that are most important in my life. And I'm going to tell you, the people that are most important to those older adults' lives are their um, younger relatives, children, grandchildren. And we see students going in, young people watching the film, and coming away saying, wow, older people are really quite cool, and, and they have senses of humor, and they're interesting. Um, so I think that, you know, number one, the, the film is, is a tool for bringing people together. Um, it's an intergenerational film, and, and really, you know, everybody can relate to it, whether you're an older person, a younger person, or something in between, um, there's a relatability factor. So that's the key. The first step is to um, inspire. Um, And then in addition to that, what we have found is that um, when we do these screenings, um, it gives us the opportunity to for communities to share resources within their that exist already exist within their community and of course we have resources that that we have developed and have put on our website we're working with a number of other partners uh, throughout North America that are developing um, additional resources for us um, that we will be adding to the website Um, and really we want the film to you know bring people's attention to the fact that there is this hub of information um, to inspire people and to you know strike when the iron's hot, get people um, inspired by by watching it, um, and then taking action and getting involved. You know, Brenda, this is Lisa jumping in too. I I think you hit on something important about the mentoring relationship. So, and John, you had said this earlier. So it doesn't you know on the face of it, people might be thinking ARP Foundation. Here you're working working with young people, and as I've shared with all of you, we want um, volunteers who are committed at any age across this nation to help older people meet the challenges that they face every day and to have richer lives, more meaningful lives. But I think it's important for all of us to remember that the best mentoring relationships between people are always mutual. And so what I enjoy so much about your work, Brenda, and what we're doing with Mentor Up across all of our areas here at the foundation is it provides a meaningful outlet for young people to have their sense of empowerment. They know things that others need to know. And so it's, and then it's helpful for older people, but they also, in the mentoring experience, are learning so much about life from the older people with whom they're interacting. There's learning that goes both ways. It's just uh, powerful and inspirational to see it happening. Mm-hmm. Well, before we go uh, to our next, our next uh, slide and our next question, uh, let me remind the audience that at any point you can start entering your questions into, uh, into the box you see on the right hand of your screen under questions. If you open that box, you can start entering them now. Uh, we will be uh, addressing your questions at the end of the session. So if you uh, go ahead and write your questions then, we'll uh, go through them as we get towards the end of the, the presentation here. So as we go to the next slide, uh, it, this is a, so it's a, obviously a wonderful program and very much an inspiration to those who participate. Uh, the question always comes up, how do you sustain programs like this? Uh, that's always a huge challenge to uh, efforts like this, which are volunteer-driven. Um, and Lisa, let's start with you about that issue. Great, thanks. 
You know, for us, sustainability is key. And, uh, you know, we've talked about this a lot on the call. It's important for us that, it, you know, in many ways this reverse or intergenerational mentoring for us really is a movement, and we see it taking hold both as we bridge the digital divide, but I think it could be really helpful in other areas as well as we enrich the lives of older people. So for me, what's important is that uh, sharing with all of you that we are committed here at AARP Foundation to developing strong strategic collaborations with other organizations. So we are open to and wanting to share what we've learned, our toolboxes, the resource guides that we've developed in order to encourage other organizations to get involved in intergenerational mentoring to help uh, their communities uh, be strong. We're also, of course, uh, working with a number of already of youth-serving organizations such as 4-H and DoSomething.org um, but again, we would welcome feedback from those on the phone and uh, are always open for new suggestions about dynamic collaborations in this field. And, you know, I also encourage organizations as they're looking at how they utilize their resources to, to uh, give funding for intergenerational mentoring because we have found uh, through some of the tools we've used, which are very affordable Kickstarter grants, you know, helping uh, organizations for minimal amounts of money allow reverse mentoring to take root. So resources should be applied to this field. Brenda? Yeah, yeah, I, I think that Lisa's absolutely right. I think that there's, you know, there's two levels. I mean, first of all, there's the grassroots level, and, and you know, that requires um, resources that are readily available in any community. You know, people power, um, energy and certainly, um, you know, we have uh, we've partnered with the FCCLA that represents uh, 200,000 high school students, and that's that's a lot of manpower for programs like Mentor Up and, and Cyber Seniors, because those those are the the teachers that you know are required for programs such as these uh, to be successful. So um, the other thing that we've we've um, realized is that there are um, communities within each. I mean, uh, organizations within in, within each community that are interested and willing to offer up resources. Um, one example I can give you is um, there was a. Uh, um, a, a similar a program such as MentorUp, the, the students were not teaching the, the seniors technology um, in a retirement home in British Columbia, Canada, uh, but they were mentoring the seniors. And Best Buy, um, Geek Squad, uh, read an article in the newspaper about it and had recently seen our trailer and were familiar with the Cyber Seniors program. And they got so excited over this that they actually went into the home and donated um, equipment so that the mentoring students could then mentor the, the seniors in technology. So it really, I think that, you know, once you get people um, interested and excited and inspired by the concept, a lot can take place. However, you know, at some point, there are um, individuals that um, that require additional funding to develop the infrastructure. Um, you know, there is obviously additional funding that's required to coordinate programs such as this. So I think that that's the other um, piece to the equation. And you know, um, we are always seeking out partners for that fit into both silos. Well, great. And, and just a quick question. Uh, tell us what FCCLA means. Um, it stands for Family Career Counseling. Um, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to do a quick. Um, <laughs> it's it's an organization um, that uh, it stands for Family Career and Community Leaders of America. And it's a it's a fabulous organization of as I said 200,000 uh, teenagers and uh, volunteer um, uh, teachers and um, community workers who get these kids involved in community service and that's that is their goal is to become involved um, doing volunteer work in the communities that they um, live and work in uh, to better their communities and and to um, really support um, the family dynamic. So it's a great fit for us. 
um, because number one, family is important to them, and number two, um, volunteerism is important to them. John, if I could jump in again, this is Lisa. I think, Brenda, you've raised uh, so, so many important points, but I want to underscore uh, also what I said earlier, that I think one a really important way to build sustainable programs is through strategic partnerships, that it is, it allows us across the nation to work with organizations that will have fresh ideas. It, it allows us, in particular when we think about um, the mentoring piece, to be sure that we have relationships across the nation in a variety of communities so that we're looking at our programming in a, through the lens of cultural relevance as well, which will be important for us as we spread the message. You know, in addition to working with cyber seniors here at AARP, there's a really powerful program called Tech, which is not, uh, it hasn't built in yet um, the longer term uh, work that your cyber seniors teens are doing, Brenda, and, and uh, some of our work, but we see at our larger member events and in communities the power of young people coming in for an afternoon or a day and just teaching older people how to use their smartphone and then the dialogue that entails or how to work with a tablet. So I share that to say I am absolutely convinced that spending resources on bridging the digital divide by using the knowledge and power of young people is really important for our nation. And then finally, on my mind, coming from higher education, is also this notion that in communities across our nation, I'll often talk with colleagues who have, they have a lot on their mind, but they have two demographics that they often worry about. What will happen to the young people in our community, and what will we do as our community ages? And I think that the work that, that Brenda, that you're doing and that we're doing here through Mentor Up at the Foundation is really helping to address both. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Uh... As we move to the next slide, uh, and once again reminding our uh, audience that we have the opportunity to ask questions as we come towards the end of our formal presentation, uh, you just open the question box on your screen and uh, type your questions in there. And We already have several uh, to ask our, our panelists today. But Lisa, uh, what are some of the ways that viewers and their organizations can support this kind of intergenerational work? that's being done through initiatives like Cyber Seniors and Mentor Up. I'll uh, talk a, a little bit more about Mentor Up, and then Brenda, I'll let you jump in also on uh, more specifically on Cyber Seniors. But first, I'll drive everyone to our website. Uh, you can visit mentorup.org, mentorup.org. And on our website, you'll learn much more about the program, but you also can download guides that we have, um, action planning guides. Uh, just tools that will help you encourage young people or organizations to get involved in intergenerational mentoring. And then we also have a volunteer locator tool so that young people and, and organizations who want to support reverse mentoring can find volunteer opportunities within 50 miles of uh, the location that you put in. We're looking for partners who want to start mentor up chapters at high schools, at colleges, at youth centers. Um, we also want feedback from all of you. Please look at our guides and the volunteer opportunities that we're offering and know that your thoughtful and critical feedback is really, really welcome here at AARP Foundation as well. And then if you have volunteer opportunities through your organization that you're having difficulty staffing with volunteers, let us know and we'll work with our mentor up groups to provide the volunteer resources the woman and manpower, the girl and boy power uh, that you'll need to, to meet the goals that you have. Brenda? Yeah, um, I mean, there's, there's lots and lots of different ways in which um, people can offer support um, for cyber seniors in the Mentor Up program. I think that, you know, to start with, um, we have partnered with Mentor Up on a 10 community tour around Grandparents Day. And uh, this tour will, um, Mentor Up is, is, underwriting the uh, screening of the tour um, in 10 communities and building support. And we would love to be able to expand that um, and make that a national engagement um, in more than 10 communities. Um, certainly, um, we've, we love the model of uh, providing Kickstarter grants uh, for small groups or individuals who are interested in starting a cyber seniors uh, community within their um, uh, a cyber seniors program within their community. Um, again, you know, it's, it's not a lot of money, but there is 
um, there is a, an expense associated with um, with printing and uh, presenting, you know, time spent going and, and educating seniors on the program. Um, so a thousand dollar Kickstarter grant can go uh, can make a huge difference in a community. Um, we are also um, looking at uh, launching a couple of contests throughout the year. We know that young people. Um, love contests. They respond to prizes. Um, and, <laughs> we all uh, do. One of, <laughs> exactly. One of the contests that, that we will be launching is a video uh, contest that actually took place within the filming of the um, documentary. Um, we had teams of seniors and uh, young people team up um, to showcase the wisdom, the humor, the skills of the senior. And so the senior became the star and the young people became the producers of the film. And it was a great, great project. Um, really, really um, brought you know, the generations together and really uh, pro provided us with an opportunity to, for older people to have more of a voice on the Internet. Um, we're also developing an educational package and um, with a discussion guide on a, a number of different themes that, that come out in the film. And, um, you know, unfortunately not everybody um, has the resources to be able to access that, um, that important um, uh, uh, document and film. And so um, we're looking for sponsors for that or, or in groups to, to subsidize that. And then just, you know, Volunteers, partners, you know, people that, that will um, help us to get the word out, uh, provide social media exposure, provide, um, you know, more traditional media. Um, any way that uh, individuals or organizations can help uh, to either get the word out or build sustainable programs, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of opportunities. Well, great. Uh, as we come to our last slide before we move to our, our questions, uh, once again, we're looking for your questions, but we have, we have quite a number. So I, I think at this point I'd like to move uh, towards uh, going ahead and starting with those questions. And uh, the first couple I have to do with the film itself. So, Brenda, I'll, I'll pass these to you. So the questions are, um, how do you find out about the availability of viewing the film and, and uh, getting access to it? And also, have you developed uh, things like uh, discussion guides and so forth for both older people and younger people to uh, help a host or whoever is, is running the film to be able to generate a discussion? Um, yeah, so the film um, will be um, will, will likely be available on our website um, sometime in September. The first version that will be coming out will be our educational package, which will include um, a 74-minute version of the film and a 52-minute version of the film. 52 minutes tends to be a little bit better, works better for classrooms. And with that educational package, there will, in fact, be a study and activity guide. And uh, we're just putting the final touches on that now, and it really is going to be a great, um, a, a, a great document because um, what we've done is we've um, identified different themes and um, who those themes are most appropriate for. So our educational version obviously can be used by schools anywhere from you know K to 12 universities, but it can also be used um, within institutions um, that support um, aging services. So, um, you know, retirement home, elder care, those sorts of facilities um, that, uh, you know, want to watch the film and then want to have a discussion after there's the guide will lead those discussions and also make suggestions for activities, which, you know, of course, will further help um, the campaign, but because many of the activities involve um, just you know asking people to get out there, start cyber seniors programs, join a cyber seniors program, um, you know get involved in some way. Okay. And Brenda and, and I have collaborated, John. This is Lisa. Brenda and I uh, mentor up, and Brenda and her team have collaborated on shorter discussion guides that will go along with the movie screenings uh, that we're collaborating with uh, AARP state offices in these 10 cities as well. So okay. we've been really thoughtful yeah. about follow-up to the screenings. Okay. I, I wanted to make sure that we move to the next slide. So it, this gives the uh, web addresses for both 
uh, organizations so that we make sure that people have that. Um, Lisa, question for you. Uh, obviously, you, you represent a large organization that has national reach. Um, do you have other suggestions about how uh, local funders might be involved in this who, who may have, uh, you know, much fewer resources or uh, the Kickstarter campaign is a wonderful example, but are there other ideas that you might have uh, to help them? Yes, absolutely. So I'll go back to, John, first I'll start with something I shared earlier about building uh, sustainable programs, and that's you know, for organizations across the nation. Think about um, encouraging the startup of a mentor-up chapter at a local high school, a local college, you know, assist with that. Uh, and or youth community center. Um, and then in addition to um, the work with uh, the digital divide, there's always an opportunity to get involved in other, other activities too, such as food drives, uh, really engaging youth directly in community. Okay. Okay. Uh, here's a question. I, I can probably go to both of you because you've both worked with um, younger people. And do you provide any training to the, the teens or college students that you work for? Uh, and the person says, I have found uh, many younger folks have little patience with actually teaching how to do this as opposed to just doing it for the older person. I don't know who would yeah. like to comment on that. I'm happy to jump in first, Brenda, and then okay. if, if you yep. want to jump in as well. But okay. the, our training guide, and Brenda, you can give more details, but we start right away in our cyber seniors, uh, in the cyber seniors training guide, and certainly for mentor up chapters that we're, you know, encouraging to develop and those that we support, we provide specific training that allows young people to have experiences so that they go, so that they develop more patience. Um, and grow their understanding of what it is to be a mentor, a friend of an older adult. Yeah. Yeah, I think the training is, I mean, it's, it's really important because um, just even, even things that may be obvious to, you know, an adult about, um, uh, you know, teaching. And the, the one thing that, so there, there's, the, there's the issues of, you know, how to, how to be aware of physical limitations that an older adult has, the limitations that they have for, you know, remembering and retaining knowledge. And those are all things that um, young people typically don't naturally think about. So I think it's, you know, the training is, is an important part um, and it's a great part for them because they start to realize that, um, you know, teaching is about communication and transferring skills. Um, the, there's a scene in the film um, at the beginning that really, really beautifully <laughs> demonstrates the fact that, you know, um, when you are teaching somebody you have to use common terminology that they will understand. Um, and we recently did a leadership conference for the FCCLA, and it was, it was interesting because my daughters did the presentation, and one of the things that they did was they invited the students up from the audience to answer seemingly simple questions that a senior citizen might ask them about, about the Internet. And, you know, it just it really demonstrated um, how difficult that skill is. So I think it's a great skill for young people to learn um, because, you know, we are dealing with an aging tsunami and so many of these young people today are going to be working in elder care. In the future, they're going to be working with older adults. So I think it's, you know, aside from the technology, they need to learn um, how to become teachers to an older generation. So yeah. training is very, very important. And, you know, we're, Mentor Up is, uh, we're really proud to say that we're also in part led by a wonderful uh, National Advisory Council of young people. And we work, uh, we offer, John, age sensitivity trainings. This is, as Brenda saying, very, very important. So in addition to the listening skills and communication skills, we run young people through activities which are important, um, such as, you know, putting something like popcorn in your shoes or something that, that yeah. puts you a little bit off kilter so mm -hmm. that you understand what it is to uh, be mobile when you may have balance problems or other mobility impairments. Um, especially when you think about technology training, having um, the young people go through sensitivity training where you actually put something around your fingers to, in essence, bind some of your fingers together, which would be would happen with arthritis mm -hmm. 
or, or other, you know, the natural progression of aging for all of us so that they have a sensitivity about what it might feel like to touch a keyboard or to learn to work with these devices. So for us, what has worked is age sensitivity trainings that are highly experiential. And I know this as an educator. Um, we all learn through experiences, and young people enjoy learning through those experiences. So I'm just giving a loud yes for training is important. Right. Great. Uh, uh, Brenda, do you have a list of on your site of where the uh, ten screenings will be? Um, we, the ones that have been confirmed, um, are on our site. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are they throughout the country? Um, um, would you like to know where they are? <laughs> sure. Go ahead. Um, now, Lisa, you might have to jump in and help me here. Um, yeah. Happy to, Brenda. Tallahassee, uh, Chicago. Uh, Tucson, Arizona, um, Lexington, Kentucky. Right. New York already took place. Um, Baltimore, Maryland. Very good. Um, one, we're going to have one, Brenda, in Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania. Right. I have to look at my calendar. I don't have the website in front of me. And uh, John, Fort Collins, Colorado as well. So okay, I think between us, Brenda, we've covered all ten. Okay, good work. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's where, uh, you know, the power of connections and partnering, right, everyone? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it does. It, it, it takes those partnerships. <laughs> it does indeed. Uh, let's see. To, to return to the question about uh, training uh, both young people and, and also older people, uh, is, there, is there a selection process for the older people that participate in the, in the, uh, in the process as well? Uh, obviously, some people have more difficulty than others. Some are more conversant with some technology to some degree. Uh, how, how, do you, how do you make sure that that connection works as well as it can? Well, maybe I'll start by saying that, sure. you know, when, when we started the Cyber Seniors Program, our goal for the program was um, to get older adults independent using the Internet. So we had a fairly, you know, narrow focus, right? It wasn't to teach people word processing. It wasn't to, um, you know, uh, work with individuals that weren't going to be independent. It was, it was really specific. However, in saying that, we are now um, – working with a number of different um, levels of uh, senior care organizations. And, you know, after, after filming and watching hours and hours of these older adults learn to use the computer, and when I say older adults, I mean our film really, I mean, it focused on, you know, really, really quite elderly people. The average age, I think, was 90. Um, so, you know, I think that Obviously, there is there is a need across the spectrum, but it changes. So, you know, for a 65-year-old, that need is very, very different than for a 90-year-old. But I've come to the conclusion that even if somebody's never going to be independent um, on the internet, it's still a very important um, part of uh, of their ability to be able to connect with other people. So, even if they can't, you know, get get Skype up on their own, um, it still offers them the, the opportunity to expand their physical and social worlds. And so, um, you know, my thinking is, is that, you know, it really should be available to everyone, regardless of whether they're going to be able to ever do it independently or not. Lisa? Yes, right. Uh, and I would, uh, you know, echo what you've shared, Brenda, and then say for us here at AARP Foundation, uh, we're really fortunate to be able to work with the AARP state offices, which are nationwide, and to be able to identify participants through community programs that are already active and up and running across the nation. Right. So, um, And then we're really interested in developing new partnerships, as I've said earlier, with organizations who would like to uh, get into reverse mentoring. Well, thanks. Thank you so much. I w want to uh, turn as we move from the questions to uh, asking each of you for your final comments. But I want to uh, also say that one of our very alert uh, uh, members on the webinar has has let me know that uh, there is, in fact, one more that you missed. There's a scheduled screening in mid-September 
in Ithaca, New York at Ithaca College. Well, and this is a problem that I forgot that, John. I'm sitting here <laughs> laughing because I would want you all to know that I was the college president for almost 20 years at Wells College, which is right up the road from Ithaca College. So I thank you to whoever identified that. It's, it's a little bit like you, you, know, you forget what's in your own backyard sometimes. So <laughs> I'm very happy to give a shout-out to Ithaca College. Uh, Great gerontology program there. They have a wonderful program, and uh, we certainly uh, work with them here. So that is, that's just terrific. Well, I do want to turn to both of you now and ask for your uh, last comments to our audience. Uh, Brenda, why don't we start with you? Okay, well, first of all, I want to thank everybody for attending and and um, just want to say that uh, we are absolutely thrilled with uh, the partnership that we've um formed with AARP Foundation and MentorUp. Um, it was a bit of a dream com come true when we completed the, the filming of our, of our documentary and we discovered MentorUp because it was like, wow, we're on the same page, we're on the same wavelength. And, and it's just, you know, I, I commend them for their forward thinkingness and, and putting the MentorUp program together because um, even though, you know, our focus was on technology, um, that just happens to be, you know, sort of a topical um, opportunity right now uh, for young people to mentor up. But I think that uh, mentoring up is really the key to it and because what it does is it, it connects people. And, and we now live in a world in which, you know, families don't live in the same house. They don't even live in the, on the same continent half the time. Um, but I think that you know, it, it's still a fundamental need for that human connection and for staying connected. So programs like Mentor Up and Cyber Seniors really um, enable us as communities to um, not only narrow the digital divide, but narrow the generational divide, which I think is, you know, something that, that we need to continually um, strive towards. So, you know, hopefully um, many of you on the call today will um, – uh, you know, watch the film, watch the trailer, um, uh, get in touch with us, and, um, you know, we'd love to, uh, to work with you. I mean, there's, as, as we outlined, there's so many different opportunities and ways um, at a variety of different levels, and, um, you know, we hope that uh, this webinar has given everybody enough information to, um, to get back in touch with us. Great. Lisa? Yes, I... Um would just say that, you know, at AARP Foundation, we are committed to winning back opportunity for struggling Americans who are 50 plus, and that means that we will pull together all resources at our disposal to do that. And when we realized uh, that how important it would be to tap into the young people who are ages 15 to 24 who really have passion and purpose and want to give back, uh, we knew we'd hit on something, as Brenda said, that is quite powerful and really important. So I encourage uh, all of us to do everything we can, and I know we are, to empower everyone to live, to age well, and to live their best lives. So we're here and available to form new partnerships, to uh, share the learnings that we've had through our Mentor Up experience and, and working on the digital divide and also using young people across all areas of aging. Um, we're, we're here also to learn from you because we're convinced that there are other programs out there that uh, empower young people to help older people. We'd like to, to learn from your teaching, teaching as well. And so for us, it's about the human resources, the financial resources to sustain intergenerational mentoring as a way to help everyone age better and to make individuals and communities strong. Well, you know, before I, I thank both of you for your participation today, I'm reminded that uh, the founder of AARP is Dr. Ethel Andrus, who was a high school teacher and then the first woman to be a high school principal in California. That's who right. Who devoted her whole life to uh, working with younger persons and then went on to found, to found uh, AARP. And so I think, I think she would be very proud of, of this effort and uh, that it, it's something that we should all uh, strive to continue on as well. So I want thank to you, thank, John. I want to thank uh, Lisa Marsh Ryerson, who is the president of the AARP Foundation, 
and uh, Brenda Rusnak, who's the producer of Cyber Seniors, for their participation in today's program. We want to thank you both for all that you are doing to make life better for older adults. I also want to thank the John A. Hartford Foundation, the AERP Foundation, the CEA Foundation, and Cyber Seniors for their support of this program, as well as the American Society on Aging for their technical expertise.